Christ's Letters Continuation of Letter 3 Day 17 of my reading and recording of Christ's Letters It will become abundantly clear to you that whilst the Father is universal, it is also individual for you. It knows you, is aware of your thinking and your problems. Within the Father love consciousness are the perfect solutions awaiting your recognition. When you recognize them, you will be released from pain when you become pliable and willing to listen. Until you are willing to listen, you will never be filled with a father love consciousness. I will tell you a parable. Imagine a child screaming and kicking because he wants ice cream. All the time, he is making this noise. His father is, away, is waiting patiently at the door of his room to show him that he has brought him ice cream and fruit. You may think this parable is improbable. Nonetheless, it is true. Mothers will remember times when, when children have been in, con, in when children have been inconsolable over something, refusing to listen what mother is trying so hard to tell them, and yet mother has the solution waiting for them the moment they stop making a noise and dry their tears. I can see the travail of people and their crying and weeping, and my compassion is boundless. You are heard but within the context of your present consciousness, there is little I can do for you. I cannot penetrate the thongs and chains of your years of ignorant thinking and acting. I see the pain perpetuated in the churches, in services, and in pulpits by ignorant sermons. I see nations and their people trying so hard to grapple with the difficulties arising from their traditional values, cultures, and religious beliefs. I see the limitations in their daily living, the lack of fulfillment of their needs and purposes, and the suffering emanating from relationships of every kind. The collective consciousness emanating from the world is a miasma of fears, resentment, angers, emotional turbulence of passionate desires, revenge and exhaustion, interthreaded with compassion, determination to uplift world consciousness, dedication to the search for unconditional love by those who have received inspiration and a degree of enlightenment. I come close to people who call on me and work with them to relieve their distress but their mindset and beliefs are so strongly imprinted in their brains that my truth cannot reach through and bring new knowledge to their minds. Many people have heard, albeit briefly and imperfectly, but, but have lacked the courage to accept new ideas and speak out. Furthermore, the time has not been right to reach through barriers of human consciousness to teach you. But now, the time is right. You have moved into a new dispensation of vibrational frequencies which will enable you to more easily rise from the materiality of the previous age. This may sound a strange statement, but there is a universal store of knowledge regarding energies you do not begin to understand. At this time, there is no earthly mind capable of understanding. It is only possible for you to imagine the spectrum of energy which is not true. It will help you, therefore, if you can accept my statements, taking them on trust because they are true. You are moving into new frequencies of vibration pertaining to human consciousness which will enable you to move forward into the spiritual mental development I described in letter 1. Since I have diverged, I must now repeat, you can no more escape the most fundamental laws of existence regarding your thinking and feeling, sowing and reaping, than you can escape the laws of electromagnetism in your material world. For electromagnetism is the impulse 
producing the law of sowing and reaping. Just as electromagnetism produces form within the fundamental field of energy particles. Therefore, it is not possible to continue to believe in Christian dogma and also try to follow these letters because dogma relating to salvation by any death on the cross, the Trinity, physical resurrection from the dead, and use of incense and set forms of prayer are fallacious and the facts now presented to you in these letters are true. The dogma and the sacramental trimmings are what you would term red herrings to gain your attention and allegiance but obscuring the truth of my teachings. Therefore, these letters had to be written. The only way I could reach the world at this present time when it is poised to enter a new mind-emotional dispensation was by using a receptive, obedient, and deprogrammed mind to receive the instruction and do the manual work for me. These letters offer the only true means by which people will find the path to the spiritual dimension in which all human error fades away and only love remains. Anything else which may be said is purely human rationalization and reason, and these are not true. People are seeking new ways to resolve old problems, particularly in America, but until they understand to resolve but until they understand the true nature of life, the ego, and the laws of existence, they will but strengthen the pull of the ego and their pain will continue. Remember, as I record for you in the following pages, the simple truth I spoke two millennia ago, this truth remains constant and consistent. Therefore, it is only possible to deepen your understanding of truth, not to alter it. Have you realized as you have read the first two letters that all I spoke to the people of Palestine was a direct outcome of my having perceived the reality of existence in the desert, that nothing was solid? Have you remembered that in my transcendent state, as I looked at the rocks, sand, mountains, water below me in the Dead Sea, all appeared to be as a shimmer of moats? Rock, sand, mountains, water were, differenti were differentiated one from the other only by the difference in the intensity of the shimmer of moats and by the apparent density of moats within the shimmer. There is no other way I can describe what I saw when on earth or convey the facts concerning the true substance of matter and the apparently solid fabric and construction of your world. In modern speech, you would probably call the shimmer of modes a vibration of particles. Perhaps you could combine the two terms and describe the most fundamental visible reality as a shimmer of particles. This conveys the sense of the light glow in which I saw the particles dance. Number three. Feeding the multitudes. Having said all the foregoing as introduction to my account of my activities in Palestine, let me take you to another day, 2,000 years ago, when the sun shone and the sky was a clear, clear blue and I started to climb the hills with my disciples in an effort to retire, to rest, meditate and pray. But this was not to be. We had thought to escape, but despite telling the people of our intentions, we were first followed by a few who then shouted to others that we were going into the hills. Although we begged them to return to their homes, the few eventually grew into a great concourse of people tagging along behind us. They were insistent that I should speak to them. You may wonder why they were so anxious to listen to me. Intuitively, 
they knew that I spoke words of life to them. Always, I showed them the activity of the Father around them, and this gave them hope and helped them to see the world with new vision. I spoke to them of love, and they felt comforted. This was why I could say to them, knowing that they would understand and agree with me, Come unto me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you my rest. My yoke is light and my burden easy. They knew that when I spoke these words, as I frequently did, I was comparing the rules and laws of the Jewish leaders with the truth I was presenting to the people. So it was that when I was besought by the people to teach them, what could I do but sit down on a rock above them and teach? I was determined that if they had come this far to hear me, they would hear something they would remember and possibly speak about all their lives. I knew that despite all I had told them about the father and father about the father and father love, they were still apprehensive of rejection by God. Although I had tried to help them understand that the father of which I spoke was not the personalized God which they worshipped, I knew very well that they were confused. Although I had told them again and again that the Father was within them, they were still worried that they might incur punishment from on high by believing my words. What should I teach them that day? I asked the Father. Then I noticed the goats and sheep feeding on the hillside under the vigilant care of their shepherd and my message for the day entered my mind. I stood up and shouted so that my voice would carry to the back of the crowds. You see these sheep and goats feeding on the hills. The sheep are in one place and the goats in another. Consider the sheep. They are patient and non-aggressive towards each other, even when huddled tightly in a corner of their pen. They feed quietly never claiming ground which is not theirs, leaving the pasture closely cropped but not damaged, allowing the grass to recover after they have passed over it. Most importantly, they listen to their shepherd's voice. Therefore, he takes good care of them. He guides them into the best pastures and he sleeps with them at night that they may not be threatened or attacked by dogs or robbers. Look at the goats how they scramble and leap over the rocks and get themselves into awkward or dangerous places. They tear at the brambles and the foliage of trees. They are the spoilers. Were it not for their use to humankind, there would be no place for them other than to be tethered all day or put out into the desert. I look at you below me, and I know that amongst you are many sheep, and also among you are many goats. There were a few angry murmurs, but, on the whole, people good-naturedly jostled and ribbed one another, pointing out the goats and laughing and nodding. It was good to see them laughing, and so I continued. You can tell the sheep by their homes, the way they treat their neighbors, and the way they are regarded by all in their community. You can likewise tell the goats are they likely to have many friends? There was a loud roar from the crowd. No! Followed by much laughter. Does the shepherd follow after the goats and care for them? Or must they look after themselves and come home by themselves to be milked at night? Again the crowd laughed and shouted various replies, some of them very amusing and witty. And so it is with you who are sheep, and those of you who are goats. You are protected by the Father if you are sheep, and you are not protected by the Father if you are goats, because you are obst obstinately following your own desires every day and possibly leaving a trail of destruction behind you. Tell me, can the Father protect the people who are goats? The crowd was silent but listening intently. <laughs>